welcome back in our continuing discussion on the evolution or generation of computers in this particular session i shall be talking to you about the development in the third generation fourth generation and the current fifth generation so the third generation was between the age 1964 to 1971 it also marked the commencement of integrated circuit known as ICs. The dawn of ICs or silicon based chips actually revolutionized computing. Transistors could be placed in a small area, a huge quantity of transistors. For example, millions of transistors could be fabricated and densely packed on a very small area of square centimeters or square inches. So now you can automatically understand the size of the machines is going to reduce drastically. The power consumption is also going to come down drastically. So because of this, there were huge gains in speed, very reliable, lesser power consumption, lesser heat dissipation. The other important development was, you always thought that we work with keyboards and monitors. That's not the case. In 64, 65, this generation started with using keyboards for data input as well as monitors called as operator consoles for understanding or talking to the computer hardware. Also you had the operating system come into picture for managing or making a computer usable or ensuring that the resources of the machine are utilized suitably. So the OS made its entrance for the best first time. Now this also marked the end of punch cards and paper tapes because we had the keyboards and monitors. Now in the previous things okay you had OS but it was it could only do a single task at a time. Here we began to have the introduction of very modern operating systems where they could handle multiple tasks or multiple applications at the same time maybe five users connected to the same computers doing different things at the same time and the computer could manage all their requirements by splitting the time between all the users now as i said because of transistors and the integrated circuits or the ic's it became cheaper more smaller or compact in size and it began adopted by more organizations like banks and financial institutions. A very famous computer of that age is the IBM 360 370 model. This is what you can see. When we were in college, we did study about the development of assemblers for this particular machine. In fact, we studied a subject called system programming for this particular machine, which is IBM 360 370. Now, in the fourth generation, which started around 1972 and ended around 1989, the most important was the introduction of the microprocessor. And the microprocessor I am speaking about is the Intel 4004 microprocessor. It was a huge development in the area of microprocessors or in computing technology because the single chip on it, it had the CPU. That means it could have the control unit ALU, it had the RAM, it had facility for input output, all this was on a single IC. So what they say is what took a room in the previous generations if a computer took a room here the size of the computer became the or the size of the chip became the size of your palm. Palm is just this particular area. So this is a major thing because you had all these things which took a lot of space on one single chip. Now, a few other things are really important in this generation. In 81, IBM released the personal computers for home use. This is where computers began a transformation from offices to homes. In 84, Apple launched its historic Apple Macintosh machines. Then you could, another thing was you had micro something called as microcontrollers, which are something similar to microprocessors at this level. Microprocessors and integrated circuits 
began to get into every area of life washing machines microwave ovens dishwashers cars this story started getting in this was due to the development of a fabrication technology called as very large scale integration that means if in a previous generation it took this much space to say put 100 transistors in this vlsi it would probably take a dot to fit those same transistors because of this vlsi technology now what happened was the machines were not only super fast they became affordable to the common man and because of that a huge mass market like fridges and televisions PCs began to be sold like that they got wider adoption from business to homes now these machines and the spread of machines was also in a small way responsible for the spread and growth of the internet at the very early stages now the important aspects in this particular generation was because of the powerful hardware and the microprocessor before you could not use an interface like windows you could not use a point and click so gui stands for graphical user interface was introduced laptops made their first entry palm tops also came into picture so this generation really started the introduction of smaller and more powerful machines now if you had to take a look at a machine in this particular generation it is the famous pdp 11 machine now this pdp 11 machine is really important or very valuable piece of knowledge for us because the unix operating system was developed for use on the pdp 11 system by Dennis Ritchie, Brian Cunningham, Ken Thompson and all those guys and most importantly the development of C has a lot of historical connection with this particular PDP-11 machine. So this is a historical machine. So just out of curiosity remember that in 1971-72 the PDP was playing a huge role in the development of uh, C programming language. Now let's talk about the last generation, the current generation, the fifth generation of computers. In the fifth generation of computers, okay, which started from 1990-92 all the way till today, it is characterized by ULSI. ULSI simply stands for Ultra Large Scale Integrated Circuits. So let me give you a simpler example again now. Suppose in this space you could have a million or a billion transistors. Now maybe in a, at the tip of your fingernail you could have a billion transistors fabricated on chips. So that, that's what you mean by ultra large scale integration technology. Then also came high capacity disks, hard disks, main memory and so on. Just give you an interesting piece of information. When I was studying, the size of main memory we used was 640 kilobytes, not even 1 MB. We used to write programs on that. And for reading and writing from secondary device, we use something called as the floppy disks and floppy drives. Now, in this particular generation, there is a huge and a serious effort to use the power of computer to do what humans can do. A lot of work is going on machine learning, artificial intelligence and so on. This generation is characterized by parallel computers and cloud computing. Parallel computers in the sense, suppose I have a work, suppose I have to add a matrix of 100 by 100. If I do it sequentially, it, will, it may take say, just giving an example, may take a minute. But if it is done parallelly by 10 processors, maybe it may take a fraction of a second. So that's what you mean by parallel computers. That means the work is broken down into a number of parts and parallelly executed, provided there is no interdependencies between them. Now, if you see in this generation, you will see cloud computing because of huge data centers. Google has data centers. You have seen internet penetrate each and every aspect of our life. Now we can say we are truly in the age of the computers or the information age and we are also jumping in to work on challenging applications like natural language processing called as NLP which involves voice recognition okay voice recognition is extremely challenging okay because just when I record this video sometimes YouTube does not produce those uh, captions automatically so I need to go to a different software generate those captions and then correct them and then load into YouTube and it's an extremely difficult thing. For example, I remember in my very first video when I was talking about a language called Algol, A-L-G-O-L, the speech recognition system understood it as alcohol. So this is the challenge with speech recognition systems. It's an extremely challenging and difficult area. A very good example of computer of this generation is the IBM 
blue jean super computer so here if you see it's got a number of processors a number of memory devices so this is extremely extremely powerful okay this is the ibm blue jean p super computer so with this i hope we wrap up on the evolution of computers so basically you need to understand we went from machine to assembly assembly to high level languages we went from vacuum tubes to transistors to ic's we went from high cost more space to lower cost lower space faster reliable less power consumption okay we went from selected use in big companies to use at homes and almost everywhere all right and basically in this generation use for trying to use computers for what humans were doing earlier in artificial intelligence natural language processing and the internet are the major focus of the current generation of computers with this let me say goodbye to all of you